I'm doing a giveaway. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can enter to win. What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given, and today we are going to be taking a look at a perfect game of Storybook Brawl. I'm not going to lose a single combat, sorry for the spoilers, but that is always a pretty sweet accomplishment when you can pull it off. And I've only pulled it off, I think, three other times, this being my fourth. And one of those other times was also with Pied Piper. I think that Pied Piper is just a really, really good hero at all stages of the game, giving that animal plus one, plus one in the opening shop. I wound up rolling the die on turn two, hoping to... Actually, there was a few things that I could hit. I could hit the Humpty Dumpty and be okay with that. I could hit the Polywoggle, would certainly be happy with that one. And Sure Shot, putting some extra stats on a ranged unit, also pretty good. That makes me want to sell off the Unicorn after that, and I'm glad that I did, because this Polly winds up slaying. Polywoggle is just so good on Pied Piper. That's another thing that makes the hero so powerful. You can pick up a whole bunch of Polywoggles and have a ton of fun with that. I'll throw in a free roll and then also pick up a Blind Mouse. And we're really off to the races here. All of our characters have plus one, plus one on them from Pied Piper or from the roll of the die. We've got the Blind Mouse, we've got the Polywoggle shenanigans going on, and then we also just have an Ogre Princess for additional stats and econ this early in the game. Everything is going pretty well, and you can see how this one is eventually going to turn into a perfect game. We did have one tie, and there will be one more tie in the future, but we are never going to lose a brawl. I don't want to say that we're not going to lose any life, because I think this Forbidden Fruit here is too good to pass up on the current board. Could have sold the Blind Mouse, though it's just much cleaner to Forbidden Fruit and pick up the donkey that way. If I had realized that this could have been a perfect game where I never lost any health, then maybe I would have gone for it, but we will gain some more health before the end of this one. Don't you worry about that. We will be sitting pretty by the end of things. We are going to be playing up against Sad Drac here but they are not going to slay. We deny them the slay, and then we get the slay with our Ogre Princess and with our Polywoggle as well. So things are going pretty nicely for us and some extra health on the donkey looking good for us as well. Unfortunately, we don't hit the best tier four unit for when you're playing a perfect game because Gingerbread Knight is just going to remain an 8-8. So that part is a little bit unfortunate. I'm trying to figure out what else I want to do with this lobby. Is it too late to pick up Brave Princess? We've got the Candy Rain here. Do I want to pick up Prized Pig both because I'm feeling strong, feeling myself here, and because it is an animal that we could potentially triple later and I decide to, well, do everything that you just saw. We roll, pick up the uh, blind mouse after picking up the prized pig. Then we find Sky Castle off the blind mouse and with the fact that we already have a pair on Ogre Princess, it seems like a great time to capitalize on that. So now Ogre Princess is only going to be getting us one character each turn, but with a little bit more consistency, that'll be a character of our level and it's just more likely to slay having a little bit more stats. Not super impressed with the helm, but maybe that gives it some staying power and we can do something sweet with that. From here, I'm going to pick up a pair of Lonely Princes and Hermes Boots. Feeling pretty good about that one as well because that is going to also allow Ogre Princess a little bit more consistency in its ability to slay. I'll throw the Blind Mouse in the slot in front of Baby Root to try to protect the prize pig. I'm not really going to worry about the donkey at this point. And uh, then I even move around uh, some other things because I am realizing that in the last second here, we're on 3.2. And so it might just make sense to hang on to the Polywoggle for another second. I really like Polywoggle on Pied Piper. That's generally been my go-to strategy on Pied Piper. 
Though this game we're going to get a little bit funky with it because we're not just Pied Piper, we're kind of Wonderwaddle in that we have this Sky Castle now and could potentially try to churn out some more treasures and do some fun stuff with that. We're going to get a double slay with Ogre Princess this turn, which is always pretty sweet. That's going to give us a Romeo and a Stag. And now we've got a whole bunch of options to play around with. We have to sell some things off if we want to pick up the Econ from the Spellweaver and the second Polywoggle, which I do because I am a Polywoggle gamer when it comes to Pied Piper. If we can triple that here, grab an upgraded tier 5 unit ahead of the curve, I will be pretty excited about that one. I go for Merlin's Test on the Ogre Princess to keep that on pace with the rest of the lobby, and then I wind up picking up a Romeo to give ourselves a look at some tier three treasures and also flip over the Frog Prince. And from here, I feel like probably don't really need the Mad Mim uh, in it at this point. Just gonna move around some other things, but basically I think that, I mean, obviously we're quite strong right now, and I think that we are maybe strong enough that I should just be hunting for Hatball with the Sky Castle. I think that we can probably get away with that this game. It's a little bit greedy, but it's going to set up for some huge endgame scenarios here. So that's what we're going to go for after we deal some damage to this Wonder Waddle. And it looks like... Uh, we got the Vulture for free this turn. I'm also going to go ahead and pick up a Tier 4 treasure, and we find the Forking Rod. So that's pretty great as well. The Ogre Princess won't really help us find Crystal Ball, though. That we are going to need to pick up some Royals from the shop to do. Uh, I also was very interested in picking up a Juliet here because we did have the Romeo, so I figured I'd throw that in, and I think I'm strong enough that I can keep playing this prized pig as well. So I'm going to continue to run that. Kind of an interesting shop here. Cindy not going to help us find Crystal Ball, but I do think with Forking Rod, this is what really pushes me in the direction to try to find Crystal Ball at this point in the game. Whereas before, might have been a little bit tepid on it, but Forking Rod is just going to be super, super powerful, and we can find the Crystal Ball uh, just a little bit easier uh, with the Sky Castle. So I'll go ahead and pick up Cindy and a Wizard's Familiar, realizing that I can activate Cindy with just two spell casts. It seemed reasonable enough to go for here. So we're going to pursue that route as well. And let's see what else we can do. Yeah, we're going to summon Juliet. That'll make us more than fine for this combat. We get to survive with our prized pig gold yet again. And now we get to cycle the vulture for some econ, then pick up Wizard's Familiar, and then just double cast Healing Potion. It's going to put us back up to 40 and activate Cinderella. Not really interested in any of these treasures here though, so I'm going to go ahead and skip this. I want to roll right now and not use Piggy Bank while we are on 4.2 and can still easily find some Tier 3 Royals. I'm also going to pick up Skip's Puzzle Rune because we have the Sky Castle and feel like maybe it's a different avenue to pursue. I'm also really looking for these Polywoggles right now. I would love to pick up Polywoggle, activate that... Um, uh, skips Puzzle Rune, and then grab an upgraded Tier 6 unit. I feel like that could also be a really, really sweet way to win this game, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm also going to try to activate the Skips Puzzle Rune with the Sky Castle and find that Crystal Ball. So for that reason, I pick up Princess Peep. We will give that a shot here as well. Ogre Princess, unfortunately, not big enough to slay on this combat, but Juliet is going to be big enough to take this combat home. It's close. It's our closest combat yet, and we get another tie, second tie of the game. I guess it's just as close as our other combat, but that one we could have lost. Um, we're 50% to lose there. Anyways, then we double up on the Ogre Princess, pick up a Crystal Ball, and gain two XP. And we are also going to quite shortly find Aeon. We're also going to mix a Wizzle, this Ogre Princess, find a Baba Yaga before that happens, which sets us up really, really well when we eventually do roll into Aeon. On. I believe it is in this next roll. And oh, we find a, a lucky coin. That's very good. That gives us one additional roll there. So I pick up Aeon, and from here, I want to cast some spells and get Aeon slaying. This Baba Yaga is temporary, so I'm actually going to sell out of my Polywoggles. I think that I have found my game plan. We are going for mages. We are not going for. Um, 
we are not going for some crazy polywoggle shenanigans at this point. So I wind up selling off the rest of my bench just to get a little bit more oomph on Aeon. Now that that is slayed, my spells next turn are gonna cost two less and we can get to go off with Crystal Ball and Forking Ride and have that be pretty powerful for us. We're also on 6.0, to XP up on the rest of the lobby, so feeling pretty good here. Gonna just use this turn to cast a bunch of spells on Aeon, but it's hard to pass up on a Scion of the Storm when we are level six. We are kind of hurting for some mages right now, so could definitely use that alongside this Wizards Familiar. I would love to find another Baba Yaga still, but I'm done with all these royals. I mean, I'll hang on to the Ogre Princesses, I'll play them if we need to for the turn, uh, but I am mostly looking to fully transition into a mage board here now. Oh, one thing I forgot to bring up, sorry. Um, Baba Yaga supporting Ogre Princess was really, really hoping that that found us either some additional Aeons or some Baba Yagas itself. I was really, I was thinking that could be really cool. I was like, okay, we don't have a Baba Yaga permanently, but we can use the one that we have right now to hopefully get us some for next turn. Fortunately, it didn't work out quite so well, but we do have two Scions of the Storm and we're up two XP up on the rest of the lobby and our other Wizards Familiar ain't no slouch either. So we are gonna be dishing out some massive damages right now. Uh, 17 damage, half the health total, for the second place player in the lobby. And we're just kind of killing it here. Uh, I really like the chance to change to Genie's Wish as well. Now you can just fire that off when you are Crystal Ball Forkin and it's relatively low risk and it actually gives us an Evil Twin. So zero mana Evil Twin that doesn't even hurt your Crystal Ball. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, that's nice for us. We are gonna finish off the turn by casting off a Blessing of Athena, pumping our Aeons just a little bit further. We still do need one more unit to throw onto this board. By the way, I also picked up a triple for Scion of the Storm and a ninth Book of Merlin. And yeah, we're doing pretty all right with this one. Not really playing anything Pied Piper related, though. Uh, maybe we will pick up another Wizards Familiar if it comes to that. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> just a sweet game nonetheless with some absolutely massive mages here and uh, a full crystal ball of it all. Um, Pied Piper definitely helped. Pied Piper let us more easily find the blind mice, which got us to this point and as well gave us those early stats during the first level of the game that allowed us to slay with Polywoggle and Ogre Princess and get us to this point. So I, I, it was definitely like an influential hero power. We're just not doing Pied Piper centric things maybe this game. We used Pied Piper, got the early lead, and now we are just mage balling here. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I am eyeing up this Baba Yaga now, but now that I've picked up another Scion of the Storm, I'm kind of thinking I don't need it. And we'll just continue to rock these seven units for the rest of the game. It is a little bit awkward if we triple the Aeon, uh, then we'll kind of be hurting for another slot. But you know what, that's a fine problem to have if we can uh, find a way to easily triple this Aeon and, and do some nice stuff with that. I'm gonna finish off by casting a few more spells. I strongly consider the Kidnaps because they'll be double casted, but just decide to roll for some more spells instead. Then I'm going to roll the die to finish some things off. Again, could pick up this Wizards Familiar here as like a backup to the backup. Not gonna worry about it. Just gonna keep on slaying with Aeon and looking pretty good with all of these mages that we got. Not a single one is even going to die, so we aren't going to get to use the Ninth Book of Merlin and we're not gonna slay with our second Aeon either. So our spells only cost one less this turn, but Lucky Coin's still free. Uh, I do really consider picking up Copycat. That could be an interesting final unit. I move some things around to see what the board might look like should we pick up a Copycat because all of our mages have last breath cast a spell, but I decide against it. I don't think that we need to do it. This game is so close to being over that I just want to finish her up here and, uh, and end it. Now, Copycat does have the benefit of being an animal, so we could more easily find them with Pied Piper, but like I said, we're kind of over that at this point. We are just rolling and casting some spells that we can find here, and uh, yeah, that's all that we need to do. Hermes, Magic Beans, 
totally fine way to finish some things off that'll guarantee more or less that Aeon gets the slay. And I'm even going to move my smaller Aeon into slot one, allow that to slay, then maybe my second Aeon will be able to slay as well. Looks like it will be able to. Good boy is not going to be good enough. Still get the slay onto friendly spirit of my opponent, only with, I guess, one, two, two reasonably sized units, but my units are just way bigger. Uh, props to my opponent for not conceding here. They're going to let us play it out a little bit longer, and we are going to, with our final turn, just, uh, oh, I guess I don't actually uh, True Love's Kiss the Wizard's Familiar. I think I mix a whistle it, though, in a moment. Uh, because it winds up being a Medusa on our last fight. But we're just going to cast a few more spells before we are all done with things here. Feed something to the Kraken. And that gives us a whole bunch of economy. So we're rolling again. Find a Drink Me Potion. We find more Kraken. So we are really able to get Kraken here and uh, cast a whole bunch of spells. Just ignoring all of these other things. Here's the mix of wizzle I'm going to throw that on the Wizard's Familiar and uh, roll past an Aeon, roll past a whole bunch of other stuff, cast another Healing Potion, and put myself up to 50 health to end the game. Pretty fantastic stuff. Aeon's still going to have no problem slaying. Even the second Aeon, even though the friendly spirit buff landed on it, is going to have no problem slaying. My opponent just with one large range unit that we'll have to battle through here, and it's reasonable, but it's not good enough. We are just way, way too strong. We even get some scams and some other things going on there, but we didn't even need to. We were absolutely massive and did not come close to losing this game, did not lose a single combat, and there you go. There is my perfect Pied Piper. That is going to be it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no lux given. Peace. This week's giveaway word is level. Each week I use a new code word that's just to distinguish who's commenting for which week and the reason I have you guys say a code word that way I can tell who is interested in the dust and who's just commenting to say hi or that they enjoyed the video stuff like that. You can definitely do both just make sure you include this week's code word. You can also enter as many times as you want per week, once per video. You can go back, leave comments on old videos, just make sure they include this week's word, but there's no limit to how many times you can enter other than, I guess, the amount of videos that I have. And I've been putting out a bunch of Storybook Brawl videos since last October. So yeah, there are a bunch of opportunities to enter to win. You can go through the backlog and watch some of those, but it's been really fun to receive the comments from you guys, get that level of interaction. You can also come join me on my Discord, which I'm trying to grow right now, just so that I have one feedback on my titles and uh, thumbnails and things like that. But I also have some fun ideas for special game modes that I could make work with lobbies of players in the future. So feel free to check that out as well. There is a link to that in the video description. And and help me climb on my way to 1,000 subscribers. I'm, I'm getting there slowly but surely, and thank you guys all very much for your support.